For TV and movie fans alike, there's nothing quite like finding a real hidden gem. Luckily, Netflix is full of them. From the sublime to the terrifying to the outright ridiculous, here are some of the most underrated titles on Netflix today. Dolomite Is My Name may have been a huge critical success when it was released in 2019, but the movie's snubbing by the Academy at that year's Oscars was nothing less than scandalous. So what's all the fuss about? Dolomite Is My Name tells the true story of Rudy Ray Moore, comedian and blaxploitation actor known for his Dolomite movies. The movie covers Moore's life during the period right before he became a star through to when his first film opens in Los Angeles. And Eddie Murphy, in a comeback of sorts, does a truly outstanding job as Moore. According to screenwriters Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski, Murphy was their only choice for the role, and they wrote the script with him in mind. The three had met way back in 2003 and bonded over their love of the real-life more. And tell him I want him out of here in 24 hours. And 23 of them are already gone. Murphy's co-stars turn in some fine performances, too. Wesley Snipes is wonderful playing the director of Dolomite, Derville Martin, and Devine Joy Randolph is tremendous as Lady Reed, Moore's longtime friend and confidant. And then there are the costumes, designed by Oscar winner Ruth E. Carter, which are as much the stars of Dolomite as the actors themselves. Swagger, thy name is Dolomite. Written and directed by Macon Blair, I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore is a comedy thriller starring Melanie Linsky and Elijah Wood. The movie is about a woman, recently robbed of a laptop, who joins her oddball neighbor in trying to track it down when the police won't do anything about it. They quickly end up in way over their heads, and mayhem inevitably ensues. Blair's double duty as writer and director works well here. He's crafted a tight, standalone movie that feels like a throwback to the sort of low-budget, quirky, independent features that so rarely get attention these days. Linsky's performance as Ruth is pretty terrific, too, bringing life to the every woman who has finally had enough. And then there's Wood, who has, in the past few years, excelled at playing the weirdo. And his role as Tony here is no exception. Steven Soderbergh's 2011 film Haywire boasts a large and distinguished cast, including Gina Carano, Michael Fassbender, Ewan McGregor, and Channing Tatum. The film revolves around Mallory Kane, an ex-Marine working for a hush-hush company who carries out covert special ops. Kane thinks her next job is going to be a piece of cake. And of course, it turns out to be anything but. Haywire is a clever action thriller that's full of twists and turns. Soderbergh not only directed the film, but acted as the director of photography and editor, too under two different pseudonyms. Maybe as a result of that, you won't find much filler in this movie, which flows along at a good clip. The film is probably most notable for its hotel fight scene between Carano and Fassbender, a nearly three-minute sequence that's as sexy as it is bone-crushing. Of course, Haywire is so much more than that, but it's still fun to see Carano using her MMA background to give her opponent a good kicking. David Mackenzie's 2016 neo-western Hell or High Water was a huge critical success and garnered numerous nominations from various outlets, including four Academy Award nominations. However, while it received all kinds of attention from film enthusiasts, it saw little success at the box office. The movie stars Chris Pine and Ben Foster as brothers who turn to bank robbery to pay off a loan and save the family ranch, while they're hunted by a veteran Texas Ranger who is determined to stop them. Seems foolish. What's that? Days of robbing banks and trying to live, spend the money. They're long gone. This movie might seem like the typical cops and robbers story, but screenwriter Taylor Sheridan has written a story that is much more than that. And while Hell or High Water looks like a western, it's actually more of a heist film, a crime drama in a cowboy hat. It's awfully pretty to look at, too, thanks to the work of cinematographer Giles Nuchens and the picture-perfect scenery of New Mexico standing in for Northwest Texas. Throw in a score written by Nick Cave and Warren Ellis, and you've got a recipe for success. When Tom Hardy isn't busy starring in big-budget summer blockbusters, he tends to stick to smaller, more personal projects. Take Locke, for example. This film is unique in a few ways. It unfolds in real time, takes place in one location, and while you'll hear some familiar voices, the only person ever seen on screen is Hardy. The movie follows Ivan Locke, a construction supervisor who learns that the colleague with whom he had an affair has gone into premature labor. Determined to be there for the birth, Locke abandons his job and his family to make the 
long drive from Birmingham to London. Along the way, he makes and receives a number of phone calls, some of which will change his life forever. Now, you might think just watching a guy driving a car and talking on the phone for 80 minutes would be boring, even if that guy is Tom Hardy. In some cases, this would be true, but that isn't a problem for Locke. Not only is Hardy brilliant in this, but the movie manages to be both tense and hypnotic despite its intimate scale. The movie's supporting cast is impressive, too, and includes Ruth Wilson, Tom Holland, Olivia Colman, and Andrew Scott. Not that you'd know it. Cody Smith McPhee, Michael Fassbender, and Ben Mendelsohn star in the 2015 Western Slow Fest, the first feature film by director John McLean. The young Scotsman Jay Cavendish leaves Scotland to search across America for the woman he loves, and along the way hires bounty hunter Silas Selleck as a guide. Little does Cavendish know, however, Selleck has his own motives for making the journey across the Old West. Things only get more complicated when Selleck's old gang leader gets involved. Unsurprisingly, it all goes south real quick. Slow West is one of those movies that some might call a slow burn. The action isn't particularly fast or furious, instead it gradually builds tension as it goes, finally ending with one heck of a bang. The film is gorgeous too, without leaning too heavily on the style of its predecessors. Don't go into this expecting sweeping vistas and epic wide-angle shots. Here, McLean's framing is tight and intimate, but it really does work for this kind of movie. When Startup was released in 2014, it was roundly praised by critics. The prison set drama stars Jack O'Connell and Ben Mendelsohn, and both men were lauded for their performances in the film. Unfortunately, while the critics loved Startup, the film wasn't widely seen by audiences, especially those in the United States. The film follows violent juvenile prisoner Eric Love, who is transferred to an adult prison due to his difficult behavior. As it happens, he is moved to the same prison where his father, Neville Love, is serving a life sentence. Neville works works for the crime lord who runs the prison, and father and son clash throughout the film. Eric doesn't much care for being bossed around by his dad, while Neville just wants Eric to be able to get out of prison one day. There's a lot to unpack in this ultra-gritty movie, and it's definitely not your typical prison film. It's not a film for the faint of heart, either, and doesn't exactly pull its punches when it comes to violence. However, Mendelssohn and O'Connell really do shine as a family under lockdown struggling to survive. Based on Bernard Cornwell's The Saxon Stories, the Netflix series The Last Kingdom is a historical drama about King Alfred the Great. The show blends actual events from the 9th century with fiction in order to tell the story of Alfred's unification of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. At the outset of the series, this land has been conquered and captured by the Vikings, with only King Alfred and his kingdom of Wessex standing in their way. In particular, The Last Kingdom follows Uhtred of Bebenburg, a noble Saxon who is kidnapped as a slave and then raised by the Danes. Uhtred is subsequently forced to choose between the people that raised him and the land of his birth. The Last Kingdom has everything you'd want in a historical drama covering this time period. Brutal fighting, great characters, intriguing storylines, and some gorgeous cinematography. And all those English accents? Well, they're just a bonus. Yeah, okay, so this is a Marvel property, which isn't exactly the most hidden franchise on the planet. Still, despite the MCU being quite prolific, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. seems to have passed many audiences by. And with Season 7 being the show's last hurrah, now would be a perfect time to give it another look. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. follows the exploits of a number of agents within the clandestine organization, including Avengers hero Agent Phil Coulson. Hey, guys. Over the last six seasons, the team is tangled with a range of enemies from the movies and beyond, and the show does recognize the continuity of the MCU, although some fans have wished for a little more overlap with the films. Still, that shouldn't stop you from adding this one to your Netflix queue. The stories and characters in the show are surprisingly rich, and it's totally worth investing a little time to catch up with them all. Based on the comic book of the same name, I Am Not Okay With This is the story of Sydney, a 17-year-old girl who is trying to deal with high school, the death of her dad, and her newly discovered superpowers. When Sydney experiences an emotional outburst one day, she realizes she's able to move objects with her mind and eventually attempts to control these powers with mixed results. In addition to her newfound powers, Sydney is also trying to manage the feelings she has for both of her friends, Dina and Stan. Sophia Lillis is terrific in her role as Sydney, since her appearance in 2017's It, the young actress has proven herself in a number of different projects, and I Am Not Okay With This is yet another step in her rise to stardom. All in all, this seven-episode Netflix original series is sure to be relatable to anyone who experienced a little awkwardness during their teenage years, or telekinesis. 
Based on the 1967 novel Ritual by David Pinner, 1973's The Wicker Man follows police sergeant Neil Howie, who visits the remote community of Summer Isle in order to investigate a report of a missing girl. Howie is a very religious man and is absolutely dismayed to find the islanders are practicing something decidedly not Christian. Leading the locals and hampering Howie is Lord Summer Isle, played to perfection by a terrifying Christopher Lee. The disturbingly friendly townsfolk do everything they can to obscure the truth, of course, and Howie's investigation quickly leads him down a very dark path indeed. There are some decidedly strange things going on in The Wicker Man, and the serene beauty of the island is juxtaposed against the utter depravity of the islanders. The performances are outstanding, too, particularly Edward Woodward's. You really feel his struggle as he tries to make sense of what is happening on the island, all while trying to do his job as a policeman and remain strong in his faith. And then there's that ending, which is probably one of the most iconic scenes in horror movie history. If you've never seen this version of The Wicker Man, you're going to want to add this horror gem to your watch list. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.